Unfortunately, his school's basketball court is not very safe to play on. It is a gravel, it is not a level ground. It hurts many people. So when anyone will volunteer ourselves to construct a new basketball court, then we will refer ourselves there and play basketball. The school has plans for a recreational area, which includes both basketball and volleyball courts. Along with this are plans to renovate a science laboratory and an unfinished auditorium to be used as a multi-purpose space. During big events like graduation, the school spends a lot of money to rent other auditoriums because they don't have a place of their own. With new chairs, the necessary equipment, and a few finishing touches, the school could have a functional auditorium, making it the biggest auditorium in Buchanan. It will alleviate most of the problem we have with congestion, with congestion, to have a greater impact for our students, where we have an able environment, where we can assemble freely together as a school. More and more parents choose to send their children to the Seventh-day Adventist School in Buchanan because of the high quality education they provide and the good values they teach. A portion of your 13th Sabbath offering this quarter will help construct a new recreational area, a science laboratory, and an auditorium here. Please pray for the Buchanan Seventh-day Adventist School in Liberia as they minister to more students, provide quality education, and teach them about the love of God. Thank you for supporting the 13th Sabbath offering. So uh, if, I, I don't know if you noticed the uh, uh, mention it early in the video, uh, there is a project that the students at this uh, Adventist school in Africa are working on, Liberia. Uh, a project, and it's a new bulletin board. <laughs> and I think that that gives you an idea. Uh, that's a major project for them. And that tells us how much they need our help with more basic things like a basketball court and uh, an assembly hall, etc. So, uh, your uh, tithe envelopes are in the pew there, and uh, if you haven't already um, given online, just put your Sabbath, 13th Sabbath School offering in a tithe envelope, and then you can put it in the collection box in the back uh, when uh, Sabbath School is over. Uh, next slide, Gary. We just seem to really be having audiovisual problems again today. All right, so that, that uh, may have gotten it. Well, this is, uh, our, um, this is our quarterly and uh, new uh, materials for next quarter, beginning next Sabbath, on uh, setting the, the topic of Christian education. And uh, these lessons will be written, each one will be written by a different Adventist College president. So kind of an interesting way to assemble the uh, lessons. And of course, there is, uh, in the middle there is a collection of Ellen White notes on education that goes along with the lesson. And then on the, the, uh, the uh, far right, as you're looking at the screen, uh, is the, uh, what's called the Bible bookshelf. Uh, book for this coming quarter which goes along with the lessons and it's written by Gordon Beats who is a, a long time Adventist educator and author so uh, this is going to be a very interesting um, uh, a very interesting uh, series of lessons for us to study and um, next uh, slide Gary see if we can make it advance no, not that. The next back up one. Okay. So this next slide. Okay, now we're okay. So uh, this is your Sabbath School Net uh, website. If you have 
uh, uh, want to look into more details than just in the quarterly, we have quarterlies available for you as well. So it's now time for us to get right into our lesson, uh, the final lesson on uh, the series from Mark Finley on making friends for God. And uh, this one is called A Step in Faith. And uh, a, very, uh, a very interesting lesson. And uh, we'll uh, uh, get right into that. We'll have prayer here in just a minute. I'll be leading out. Lauren uh, Fraser is with us today and Don Williams and James Davison. So we uh, will uh, get right into the lesson. Testing, there we go. All right, so um, let's bow our heads for prayer uh, before we start. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for the privilege of opening your word and of learning more about taking a step in faith with you. And the most important thing we can learn today is what faith really means uh, and what it means to have a relationship with you. And we ask these things in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, our uh, lesson uh, is, uh, like the title, uh, is uh, about taking steps in faith, but with a specific emphasis, and that is on leading other people to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jesus uh, leads us, and this is a very, uh, a very uh, good um, illustration uh, based on a vision that Ellen White had, and she wrote down in the book, uh, Early Writings, um, about Jesus physically leading his people as they head for the kingdom of heaven. And uh, this, is the, this is the, really summarizes in just uh, a picture, basically, uh, our whole, uh, the whole idea of our relationship with God. Would one of you guys like to read, uh, or, or girl, uh, our memory verse? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. All right, so uh, a very uh, important uh, text from Philippians, and we're going to look at this in more detail here in a minute. Uh, so uh, just thinking about the, uh, the lesson as a whole, uh, we're going to start off with this, with this text, basically, which talks mm -hmm. about Jesus leaving the glories of heaven and what he came to this earth and did for us. And this mm -hmm. uh, quote is in our introduction of our lesson from Desire of Ages, never can the cost of redemption be realized until the redeemed shall stand with the Redeemer before the throne of God. Then as the glories of the eternal home burst upon our enraptured senses, we shall remember that Jesus left all this for us, mm -hmm. that he not only became an exile from the heavenly courts, but for us took the risk of failure and eternal loss. Then we shall cast our crowns at his feet and raise the song, Worthy is the Lamb. Amen. And uh, this is, uh, uh, I think, something uh, just very important uh, for us to uh, remember. Now let's, um, uh, let's look for a minute at the first verse in this uh, memory verse, the uh, Philippians 2.5. Um, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Right. And uh, I just wondered if anyone had any thoughts uh, about what this means to let the mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus. Mm. Any well, ideas on that? Well, I just think about uh, the life of Christ as we study Christ and his approach to ministry, interaction with people. Okay. It should be our approach 
to ministry. I mean, we should, uh, he's our role model, he's our mentor. And so that mind of Christ should be the mind of his disciples. Okay, so the attitude mm -hmm. maybe that, that, that Christ had is uh, an attitude that we should have um, uh, just towards life in general, but uh, it uh, uh, raises the further question this is just very slow and changing. Uh, what, would have, what would have governed Jesus' thought patterns? Mm. What is it that, uh, that really was, uh, you know, the guiding principle of his life? I think, I think that he constantly thought, is this in conjunction with the will of my father? You know, uh, what would my, you know am I in lockstep with him? Uh, what did he base that that will of his father on? What, mm -hmm. what uh, something he learned from his mother? Lauren's got her hand on the mic. Well, we we know that uh, God is love, and I think that that was always on his mind. How can I, how can I show love to people? And I think that that's why Jesus was a friend maker. You know, he made friends with people, and I think that that better enabled him when he was thinking about how can I love people to actually serve them and bring okay. them closer to him. Okay, that's good. Any other ideas? Yeah. John. Uh, in John 6, 40, Jesus says, and this is the will of him that sent mm -hmm. me, that everyone would see it, the son, and believe it on him, mm -hmm. may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So that mind of Christ was always on this father's will, that men would see the son. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, how did how did Christ learn about his father's will? He was a baby right. in the beginning. Yeah. How did he learn about his father's will? Yeah, nice. I'm well, fishing well, for a specific answer. Yeah, first here. of all, I think his mother was was a great teacher. Okay, uh, um, and then I'm, and then of course the Holy Spirit. What did, what did she? How did she teach Jesus? Mm -hmm. She taught him. The scriptures, the didn't scriptures, she? Yeah, scriptures, yeah, yeah. And uh, th this was she was so successful in this that when he was twelve years old, mm -hmm. he went with them to the temple for the Passover mm -hmm. and ended up uh, having a, a, a deep theological discussion with the uh, rabbis. That's right. And uh, they were amazed mm -hmm. at Jesus' knowledge of the of the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And this is even more amazing when you remember. That at the, in that time, the scriptures was what? Old Testament. The Old Testament mm -hmm. only. Mm -hmm. and, and secondly, the, he didn't have a Bible right. uh, like we like have like we or, a, yeah. or a, a phone or a tablet with, right. with the scriptures in it. I mean, we can have the Bible with us 24-7 right. basically nowadays. But in, in those days, if they went, wanted to read the scriptures, the only place they could do this was in the synagogue. Right. Yeah. Really. And, this, and the scriptures were kept in a very special place call, called the ark, which is not the same as the ark in the, in the temple mm -hmm. or the tabernacle. But they were kept in this special cabinet and brought out with a lot of ceremony mm -hmm. when it was time to read the scriptures. And uh, so they really depended a lot on memory, didn't they? Yeah, I was going to say. They didn't have yeah. the Bible just That's to right. sit and study like That's we right. do. They, they heard it. Jesus' mother knew it from uh, years of, of hearing God's word. Yeah. And she taught it to Jesus. All these stories mm -hmm. um, were, part of his, uh, were part of his training. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but also, uh, I think, Dr. Carrico, based upon what Jesus says in John uh, your microphone, five, your microphone. John 5, uh, 19. He said, Very, very, I say unto you, the mm -hmm. Son can do nothing of himself, mm -hmm. but what he seeth the Father do. Yeah. For what things soever he doeth, these also he doeth the Son likewise. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him with greater works than these that you may marvel. Mm -hmm. okay. So that, that interaction that Christ had with his father daily, that mm -hmm. communion we had, mm -hmm. it gave him a perspective of the ministry that, that, the, that the father sent him to do. So there's two things that Jesus had that we also have to, to improve our relationship with God, and that is studying God's word and mm -hmm. prayer. Yeah. Amen. That's right. And uh, uh, yeah. he... he uh, followed the same uh, path and the same pattern that uh, 
uh, that we could. And uh, this little question on the screen, what was the essence of his thinking, uh, really was just what we've been saying. What's God's will? And the way he found mm -hmm. that out was by studying God's mm -hmm. word mm -hmm. and praying just like we do. Right. Amen. Absolutely. And uh, this uh, uh, next little uh, uh, point, I think, that the, that the lesson makes is that uh, from all eternity, mm -hmm. Jesus was equal with God. Mm -hmm. And this is one thing that it, sa that it says here in this first verse that we read from Philippians 2. Uh, and, and in Desire of Ages, Ellen White says, In Christ is life original, unborrowed, mm -hmm. and underived. In mm -hmm. other words, Christ was just as much God as the Father was. Right. And, uh, and uh, the, the sense that Christ was the only begotten Son is not in the sense that somehow Christ came from the Father, mm -hmm. but it's the relationship mm -hmm. that they had together as part of the Godhead. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, Christ, she says right here that Christ was there as, he was there for all eternity just like the Father was mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit. Right. So uh, we, we have to remember that, uh, that uh, Christ's position in heaven before he came to this earth was something that, that is very hard for us to, to comprehend yeah. and understand. Mystery. You know, I like also what Christ told Philip when he asked the question, show us the Father. Mm -hmm. And John 14, verse 10, he said, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, mm -hmm. and the Father in me? Right. The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Mm -hmm. right. Then verse 11, he, ver he's, uh, he vowed it again, believe me that I am in the Father, mm -hmm. and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Yeah. So that relationship, I mean, it, it was uh, like a, a thread, you know? I mean, That's right. Together. So, and, and then Jesus, just a little later on in that chapter, or maybe it's the next chapter, he says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. You've seen the Father. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. So it's not just that there was a, uh, that, uh, that Jesus thought about God a lot and uh, it occupied his, uh, his thoughts. Literally, Jesus and the Father were one mm -hmm. uh, in every, in every uh, sense. And uh, this, of course, started in eternity before Jesus came to this earth. And uh, so uh, this, this idea of self-sacrificial mm -hmm. love, I think, is, uh, is really uh, important. Um, Lauren, would you read, just read this Philippians 2, 5 to 11 for us, if I can get it to actually come up, come up on the screen here. I've clicked on it. There we go. There we go. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Mm -hmm. And being found. found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, the name of Jesus every Amen. knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So in just these few verses, Paul uh, is uh, describing to the Philippians the whole process mm -hmm. of the incarnation of Jesus uh, starting out as God and becoming man. And uh, some people have called this uh, the, the, the ladder that Jesus, uh, you know, we, we remember the story of Jacob's ladder mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. And, uh, and the latter there was symbolic of Christ himself, which connects heaven and earth. And uh, so this is, this is an outline of this latter in Philippians 2. Uh, Jesus was part of the Godhead.
Uh, he left his power and left heaven. Mm -hmm. uh, he was not willing to just stay uh, mm -hmm. where he was. He went out of his comfort zone, as it says several times in the lesson. Right. He became a human being. Just think what a, what a condescension that was right. to actually, for the creator of the universe, to become one of his creatures. Mm -hmm. And uh, not an adult human being, but a helpless baby. So can you imagine any more vulnerable way to come into enemy territory, so, so to speak, mm -hmm than to come as a baby mm -hmm. and uh, be totally dependent on other people, uh, you know, for, for everything, uh, right. literally for your food, mm -hmm. your uh, protection, your safety, your clothing, education, uh, er everything. Yeah. Education, education mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah. And, uh, then he grew up to be a servant and I put in here a disreputable servant because it says he became of no yeah. reputation mm -hmm. uh, in, in Philippians 2. So Jesus was, he was not only a human being who started out as a baby, went into a childhood, teen, he was a teenager, uh, just like us, and eventually an adult. He didn't have a, a fancy reputation, and he, 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 uh, behaved himself as would a servant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, then he suffered death was was he was killed by his own creation you know mm. this is just uh, again this is telling us about what God is like yeah. through this process that Jesus went through mm -hmm. and it wasn't just any death his death was the worst that we can imagine uh, mm -hmm. that of crucifixion so then uh, is the process that almost goes in reverse. After his humiliating death, mm -hmm. uh, he was resurrected and exalted. And uh, he returned to heaven. And uh, one day he will come back to earth. And of course, that's part of our name as a church is Adventist. Mm -hmm. We're looking for the second advent, advent of Christ. Yeah. Of Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then, then Paul says, every knee on earth and in heaven will bow to Jesus. Mm -hmm. After all these steps down, he's lifted back up by, in his relationship with the Father. Mm -hmm. Every person will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Because and because of him, the, the whole passage ends this is all to the glory of God. This is all glorifying God. And there is actually, I think it is just so important for us to remember that there is nothing we read in the scriptures that is not for this purpose. Mm. To help us to understand God and his gracious and loving character better. And uh, that was Jesus' whole purpose here on earth, wasn't it? Mm. To... Uh, to uh, help us to understand what God was like. I was thinking about the sacrifice that you were sharing. Uh, in Hebrews, the second chapter, verse 14, brings out also, for as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that the, had the power of death, that is the devil. Mm -hmm. Then I love uh, verse 16, says, for verily he took on not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. Wherefore, in all things it behoove him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of people. So the sacrifice that Christ made, he became one of us. That's mm -hmm. right. To let us know that we can make it. We can overcome through his power, through his strength. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you said, he returned again. He promised to come back and receive us. Mm -hmm. what, what is it that makes it so important that Jesus came and became one of us? What problem existed before Jesus came down here? Did, did we understand what God was really like uh, from fully from the Old Testament, I guess, is, is, is what I'm saying. Um, no, I, you know, Satan's accusation is that uh, Christ, is God, is an unfair arbiter and that sort of things. So our understanding of God was was marred, and and 
again and again, if you look in the Old Testament, you find that God's people, they don't have a real clear conception of who God is because they keep because of the sin issue. And so he came, I think, to set the record straight. Uh, and, and we can understand how this would be, can't we? Because, yeah, absolutely, because, because of sin. God often, yeah. just because of the, of the stubborn nature of his people in the Old Testament, the children of Israel, he had to be very stern with them. Yeah. And uh, when he came to Mount Sinai, mm -hmm. uh, he was not a suffering servant. He was a devouring uh, atomic fire on right. top of Mount Sinai. Right. And, and literally, Moses had to be shielded by solid rock in order to survive and even in, close to God's presence. Um, so there, there's, you know, their experience up to this point, they saw God's power, but they didn't, they didn't fully understand his love. Now, that's, that's there right. in the Old Testament. That's right. right. Um, so I think Philip's question was very important. John 14 says, show us the Father. That's right. And as you said earlier, he says, if you've seen me, you've yeah. seen the Father. Right. And so they had a demonstration of the Father and the love of Jesus as he ministered to people, as he helped people, as he raised the dead, as he preached the good news of salvation. Mm -hmm. And we get another, a better understanding in our own human nature, the Father, through his right. Son. Right. And, and that's really what, you know, back to the topic of making friends for God, mm -hmm. that's really what we've been talking about all quarter, isn't it? That right. our right. job is not to teach people just about specific doctrines. Right. Our real job, and that's what the doctrines support, is to help people understand what God is really like. Right. And that he wants to uh, reach out to them if they're just willing to uh, return his, uh, to return his, uh, his love and his interest in them. Mm. So uh, th this whole idea of the incarnation, all these steps that Christ took mm -hmm. down to be with us, right. it was not just, you know, him showing off. Right. It was really necessary for us to understand what God is, the only way we could understand what God is truly like is to see God in human form, mm -hmm. and if you see Jesus, mm -hmm. and you see how he behaves in a cert certain situation, then you know how God behaves yeah. in that same situation. That's right, uh, you said a wonderful example, and it gives me a good chance to get back to some of the first thing you said in the introduction that we need to uh, focus on. It talked about him being in, in exile. He exiled himself from heaven, and all of that, uh, the lesson brings out, it says, the risk of failure and eternal loss. So then, it, you know, as we see Jesus, and then and if we see Jesus and we see the Father, we see that everything is, is placed out there for our redemption. Mm -hmm. So it this, this was a big, it was a, it was a, uh, there was a risk. There was involved, a risk. Wasn't there? An actual risk that, there could, you know, there could be a sep total separation. Uh, the, the, I don't. It's the mystery of God. It is. I don't understand it all. But the thing of it is, the the point I focus on is that the depth of the love that God has for to save us, mm -hmm. the, the how low He came to rescue us from this sinful world mm -hmm. is just and, amazing. And the book Desire of Ages says that when Jesus was on the cross, to every appearance. Everything that he could see mm -hmm. and understand, this was it. This was the yeah. this was eternal separation from his father. Right, and uh, that's why at the end of his time on the cross, he said, "My God, My God why have, have you, you forsaken, forsaken me?" Absolutely. And uh, and of course, the answer to that is because of the the terrible effects oh, of sin and sin. rebellion. Yeah. And uh, Jesus was, uh, was, was going through this really as a demonstration for us to understand mm -hmm. this is what sin is like. This is what rebellion leads to. Right. And, uh, Absolutely. and uh, if, as we look at Jesus' life and how he lived, right. uh, also a demonstration of how we can live yeah. and uh, be closer to God as well. Amen. Now Amen. you're related to the Father, yep. Um, where were we? Self-sacrificing, commitment, call. Mm. 
Uh, if Jesus is in our minds, our lives will follow the same pattern. Mm -hmm. So that's what it means when Paul says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. And how do we bring Jesus into our minds? Mm. Just in a practical sense. Well, to me, it's the, uh, that daily study of his word. Okay, right? we, th we think about Jesus. Right. That's, that's what this means. Yeah. Right. He could have said, thinking about Jesus mm -hmm. is what will give you the same uh, victory that he had. Yeah. Amen. And thinking about what he did, and of course, like you say, studying his word, praying, those, praying. Are the, those are the, mm -hmm. the practical ways. Mm -hmm. But our thoughts, if our thoughts are continually on other things... Mm worldliness mm -hmm. this mind is not a in us that was in Christ Jesus mm -hmm. if our thoughts are on Jesus and the father and his love for us then that is how we actually fulfill these words that Paul spoke mm -hmm. so uh, let's go on now to uh, Monday's lesson uh, this is about uh, Jesus call to the mm -hmm. disciples um, and uh, Someone want to read Matthew four eighteen to 20? Um, and Jesus walking uh, by the Sea of Galilee saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then he said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. They immediately left their nets and followed him. So, you know, they were... Mm -hmm. uh, Come Jesus on. called them, and they acted on that call. Mm -hmm. and that's very important, isn't it? Amen. Yes. Uh, same thing with, uh, with Matthew, the tax collector. Uh, Jesus is passing by. He sees him sitting at his mm -hmm. tax booth, and he says, follow me. So what does Matthew do? Does he say, well, I'll, let me just fix all this stuff up, put, away my, uh, put all my money in the safe, mm -hmm. Uh, be sure I've submitted all my tax returns to Caesar, and then I'll come and find you. No. No, it says he rose and he mm -hmm. followed him. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the idea is that every, he left everything behind. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, Matthew was a very a rich and powerful man, and a yes. tax collector, of course, was a, an agent of, of the emperor. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, so uh, this is, you know, this is, uh, this is the reaction we need to have when Jesus asks us to follow him. Yeah. And uh, what did Jesus, when he asked the fishermen uh, in that other um, uh, text, it's, it's not, uh, it, it is in this, in this verse. After they follow him, what does he want them to do? Yeah. It's down toward the bottom of the paragraph there. He will make them fishers of men. Them. Follow me, I will make you fishers of yeah. men. And yeah. that does not mean go fishing mm -hmm. uh, for fish down at Grand Lake. Yeah. It means going out and like the, the whole topic of our lesson this quarter, making friends for God. Right. Uh, yeah. That uh, we're, we're pursuing mm -hmm. Uh, people who who don't know God and we're trying to uh, yeah. to uh, make that introduction to it's, them. And it's crucial for us, you know. Psalms 119 verse 60 says, "I made haste and delay, delayed not to keep the commandments." So you see that underlying theme all through Scripture is that, you know, today is the day of salvation. <laughs> you know, if you hit, you know, harden not your heart. Now's the time. You know, when when the Spirit of God, when the voice of God comes to you. You need to stop what you're doing. You need to follow because eternal life is at stake. Um, so, you know, at this, at this mm -hmm. moment in time, as we're talking about these things, some of us are experiencing impressions from the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit in our Man. minds saying, well, you need to be more involved in sharing this with other people. Right. Amen. And the, the natural reaction is just this thing, you know, to put it off. Mm -hmm. uh, to wait until we get all of our tax returns filed and right. this, that, and the other. Yeah. Uh, and, of course, the risk hair. is what? Let me get my hair fixed first. You yeah. Know. <laughs> you know, i got to do the dress up. What's the danger if we put things off? <laughs> uh, There's a yeah. passage in uh, yeah. Isaiah 43, verse 10, that compared to what, what Jesus was doing here. It says, You are my witnesses, said mm -hmm. the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. 
Before me there was no God formed, neither should there be after me. I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. And verse 12 says, I have declared and have saved and mm -hmm. have shown when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses, said the Lord, that I am God. Yeah. Okay. So when God makes an impression on us, yes. whether it's to follow him yeah. uh, as a Christian or whether it's to follow him as a witness, mm -hmm. if, we don't, if we don't act on that response right at that moment, there's a risk yeah. that we we will become distracted, mm -hmm. isn't That's there? That's right, and farther yeah. separated that, from God. That the devil will come into our lives and say, well, here's something that's very important you need to do first. That's right, that's right. And, and your, your family will come to you and say, this is something I need for you to help me with. Right. Uh, and, and, there will, and, and the church will come to you and say, mm -hmm. will you please do, take care of this job mm -hmm. in the church? And if anything, mm -hmm. even those things that are, are wonderful in and of themselves, yes. If that comes between us and our following God's leading and right. his uh, direction, mm -hmm. then right. it's a danger to us, isn't it? That's right. You know, and on that note, and in that area, you know, it's easy for us to think uh, that the pastor has to do all the work in the church or an elected official in the church. But God call, God's call is for all of humanity, isn't it? That's right. It's not just for the, the, the pastor or the teacher or whoever it is, right. God calls all of us to uh, be laborers in the vineyard. So we don't throw okay. that out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I liked, I believe it's a point made towards the end of the lesson. Like it's really a mistake not to use and access everybody's talents and gifts yes. in the church. Mm -hmm. That's right. To reach out to people because one person isn't going to do it. We all have to be involved in, Every single one of us has things that we can, has gifts and talents that we can use That's to right. bring people to Christ. Amen. Beautiful. Amen. So uh, when, when God asks us to do something, and this brings us to Tuesday, a mm -hmm. uh, lesson about Paul or Saul as he was uh, known then, uh, you know, uh, Pastor Finley asked the question, who would choose their worst enemy to become their herald. Mm. And that's literally what God did in the case of Saul. Saul uh, was going around and uh, persecuting God's people and actually putting them in prison mm -hmm. and, and getting them put to death. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so uh, he's an example of someone that we would not choose mm -hmm. as a minister of the gospel or as a witness. Mm -hmm. But of course, Jesus... You know, just like it said in the Old mm -hmm. Testament, when they were, when uh, they were looking at the sons of Jesse yeah, to king, anoint a king, king. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Samuel kept looking at the different sons, and they were really, uh, some of them were really uh, impressive and strong yeah. and noble Brutal. and kingly and a lot of hair. And uh, and God <laughs> said, you know, yeah. Samuel said, surely this is the one. Surely yeah. this is the one. Right. But then God said, wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, I don't look at, at people like you do. Yeah, right. That's right. That's right. I look at their, at their thoughts. Mm -hmm. He said, look, you know, God looks at their heart. But that's, mm -hmm. what he was, what, that's what was being communicated in their, in their understanding of physiology. Yeah. I, yeah. I look at their thoughts mm -hmm. and their motives. And uh, I don't look at people like you do. Yeah, he just doesn't look at people like we do. Because in the lesson, this part of the lesson also brings out, he actually chooses the demoniac. Right. And, and the, the Canaanite woman, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, we would have, but God is, he sees. And so we need to think like Jesus did, have the mind of Christ. And we need to look beyond what a person does to us, what a person is doing. Mm. And we need to go to God with each person that we run in contact with and see them as God could see them. You know, That's if, right. we, if we could do that. Uh, we would be an improved uh, movement of people. And, of course, this story of yeah. Paul, mm -hmm. uh, in the process of all this resistance against God, mm -hmm. God suddenly sa gets his attention, yes. uh, literally knocks him out of his uh, saddle, out of his saddle mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, mm -hmm. and blinds him yeah. with his presence. Right. And uh, so there would be two ways you could respond to that, wouldn't there be? Yes, that's right. Uh, you could be resistant. You could say, God, why are you doing this to mm -hmm. me? Uh, 
no wonder, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to do your will and taking right. care in getting rid of these Christians that are, uh, that are opposing your, uh, your, your uh, Jewish people. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and Saul could have been uh, resistant to God. That's right. But instead, he responded to uh, Christ uh, because he began to realize that's who was, uh, uh, Christ told him that that's who had stopped him right. and uh, gave him directions. And uh, our time is uh, fleeing, but uh, in Acts 9 is, you know, is this wonderful story uh, of, him, of him being blinded mm -hmm. and then he goes to... Uh, uh, on into uh, uh, someone else's house and stays for a few days. He's right. blind. That's right. And then one, and then God actually sends one of his church members, right. <laughs> Ananias, right. probably just like one of us, mm -hmm. grave reservations about coming and even being in the room with this guy because he's the one that's been hauling uh, all of Killing God's people. people into jail. Yeah. And, uh, and God tells him to go talk to Saul and lay hands on him. Mm -hmm. And he does. And Saul is, uh, is given his sight. And uh, suddenly, uh, Saul is, is, is completely turned around in mm -hmm. his direction, isn't it? Because uh, yeah. uh, it says he, he was strengthened after he had uh, received food. He spent some days with the disciples at Damascus. And immediately, mm -hmm. he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the son of God. Amen. And uh, so Paul went from one who was, mm -hmm. excuse me, from one who was actively opposing God to one who was, uh, who was uh, a champ, I guess we could say a champion Absolutely. for God. So Absolutely. Uh, an amazing, uh, uh, an amazing change. And, uh, and uh, in his letter to Timothy, uh, he says, um, uh, I think it's, um, uh, I can't quite read the, uh, l I think it's verse six. I am already being poured out as a drink oh, offering, very uh, graphic way of mm. describing what was happening to Paul mm -hmm. as he was serving God. He yeah. says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept, kept the, the faith, faith and there is laid up for me yeah, a crown true. of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Um, which, uh, which he's looking forward to mm -hmm. receive uh, from, you know, from Jesus in person. Yeah. And th this is so much more significant when you think of yeah. the experience that Paul had with Christ yeah. on the road to Damascus, yeah. his persecution of, of Christ's followers. Yeah. This was an uh, arrogance or misguided love that he was actually just so plugged into life, you know, that he just, you know, he just, just makes the pronouncement, you know, I fought a good fight, you know, he's not being boastful or anything like that. And, and that's a good thing about, cause he's connected with the source of life. Right. He's finally connected with the source of life. He's, right. He can do whatever he, he talks about. It. Also, I'm just jumping in. He had been stoned, had been, you know, <laughs> been beat up, he had all kinds of, if you read that in the, in the. He'd been Cor left for dead several yeah, times. Yeah, Corinthians. And, it also says, too, and I'm going to get back to this section of the lesson, too. It talks about the demoniac, the Samaritan one, and the, the, uh, the prostitute and the tax collector. It says they could not be silenced. They were connected with the source of They couldn't be silenced. Amen. And, and it does say, we just mm. read, you know, that he immediately, mm. yes. after his conversion, went and started uh, yeah. preaching about yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And, and keep... And, Remember what it says there. He was preaching mm -hmm. that Christ is the Son of God. He was, he's preaching the whole right. gospel, not just uh, right. about uh, uh, one doctrine, uh, yes. one pet doctrine that he might have. That's right. But he's teaching the, the basic gospel, which is the truth about God. I'm a vegetarian. I like to talk about the power that Paul yeah. had and he's able to preach the gospel in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 8 and 9 when God called Jeremiah said be not afraid of their faces mm -hmm. for I am with thee to deliver thee said the Lord but here God said in verse 9 then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth mm -hmm. and the Lord said unto me behold I have put my words in your mouth mm -hmm. and when you said Paul was sharing the gospel God put his words in Paul's mouth and he was able to effectively share the gospel mm -hmm. with um, the mass so and, and Jeremiah's experience yeah. was similar to Paul's God yeah had a job for him to do mm -hmm. in, in, in giving right. the message to other people. 
And, uh, and God not only said, you need to do this, he gave him, told him what to say. Amen. Amen. So um, let's go on to uh, Wednesday's lesson, the demands of love. Mm. Uh, Christianity uh, not about all. is uh, not just about giving up, you know, bad you know, I, I gave up bad smoking yeah. or I gave up partying or drinking. That's not what Christianity, <laughs> being a Christian, is all about. That's right. Because actually all those things, in the, when you really think about it, those are harmful, th <laughs> right. harmful things that, you know, it's not, we're not giving up anything. We're, mm -hmm. it's, it's beneficial to us yeah. mm -hmm. to not have those things involved in our lives. Uh, but it is, uh, uh, Jesus gave up all the good things of heaven so that everyone else could be, so that we could all be saved. Amen. And uh, so it's sort of a putting it all in perspective, isn't it? To uh, understand what Christ did for us, uh, anything we can do in response to his call is, is you know, is, uh, is, no, is nothing by comparison, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Once we get to heaven. Well, let's, uh, let's go on. Uh, Jesus has a conversation with uh, Peter after his uh, resurrection. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, three times he asks Peter, uh, do you love me more than the rest of these guys? Feed my lamb, feed my sheep. And Peter says, mm -hmm. yes, I do. Lord, you know. Lord. And uh, there's, a, there's a lot of interesting things to go into in this, in this passage, which we won't have time, but uh, it was... Why, why did Jesus ask him this question three times? That's that's my yeah. that's my question. Yeah. I think to help Peter uh, and help solidify Peter's belief. Okay, he had to he had to be sure he understood. Yeah. Well. And what had just happened three times? Yes, uh, in the denied. garden. He denied Jesus yeah. three times. So in essence, it's like that ladder from yeah. heaven, and then yeah. and then the build back up. Back build up. up. Yeah. Uh, in the same way, Jesus denied. Or Peter denied Jesus three times, and now uh, Jesus is giving him three different opportunities to say, yes, I love you. And, of course, each time uh, he tells him to feed my lambs. Right. So he's using a little different uh, metaphor here than, than fishing for mm -hmm. human beings. He's, he's, he's telling Peter to be nurturing and take care of of, uh, of God's children, basically, mm -hmm. feed my lambs. And of course, uh, that kind of brings to mind the, uh, the uh, example that Jesus gave himself mm -hmm. of being the good shepherd, uh, that uh, he is, uh, again, a servant who mm -hmm. takes care of others. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the whole passage ends uh, with Jesus saying, feed my sheep. Uh, after this third, uh, uh, after this third uh, time, he asked the question, and after Peter answered it, well, love's commitment, uh, uh, which is uh, Thursday's lesson, uh, Jesus uh, then goes ahead and talks to Peter about what's going to happen someday. How he's going to suffer. He's going to be led and uh, led away and uh, stretched out his hands, and. That Peter was crucified, wasn't he? That's right. Uh, eventually, he gave his life for Jesus. Uh, and uh, it says that Jesus said this to indicate the kind of death by which Peter would glorify God. And that is so important to remember, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That it is not about glorifying Peter or glorifying ourselves when we do things for God. It's all about bringing glory to God. Mm. Yeah. I think about Peter and... Uh, from the last uh, uh, presentation to where we are now, uh, Peter is like many of us today. I mean, we have start off uh, being a Christian and things happen in our life that could help us to go south. But Christ let us know there's hope. Mm -hmm. And he asked the question to Peter again for validation, do you love me? Mm -hmm. And Peter said, yes, Lord. He mm -hmm. said, feed my sheep and feed my lambs. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Peter was validated with Christ at that period, and as you sh were sharing, that he went on uh, to uh, be a, a champion for the Lord, like, like Paul. That's right. That's right. 
Well, uh, we're almost uh, to the end of our time. I wanted to just, uh, as we wrap things up, I just wanted to play this little video uh, summary of our quarter's lessons. Okay. Uh, this is uh, prepared by the South Pacific Division. So way down uh, around Australia and uh, the, the, the mm -hmm. South Pacific. And, uh, and just uh, think about this for just a minute before we conclude. If we can get it to uh, happen. There it is. Sharing God's message with everyone is a leap in faith. It leads us out of our comfort into uncharted waters. At times, it's a sacrifice, but the joys our Saviour offers are far greater. To follow Jesus means that we love as He loved, serve as He served, and care for others as He cared. The essence of God's thinking was self-sacrificial love, to empty us of selfish ambition will cost us something. It cost Jesus everything. From all eternity, Christ was equal with God, but he gave up his divine privileges. He took on the form of a man and became a humble servant of humanity. In the ultimate act of love on the cross, he gave his life to save ours eternally. Heaven is worth any sacrifice we make on earth. The disciples left their boats, occupations, and familiar surroundings to follow Jesus. They sensed the call to a higher purpose. God may not be calling you to leave your profession today, but he is calling you to an extraordinary life. Deep within all our hearts, there is a longing for something more in life. We want to live for something worthwhile, for a better purpose. When Paul accepted Christ, his whole life was radically changed. Christ gave him an entirely new future. He led him out of his comfort zone to experiences he could hardly have imagined. Through the Holy Spirit's guidance, the Apostle Paul proclaimed the Word of God to thousands throughout the Mediterranean. His witness changed the history of Christianity and the world. Jesus often chooses the most unlikely candidates to witness for him. Think of a prostitute, a tax collector, uneducated fishermen, and a fierce persecutor of Christianity. These were all changed by grace and then sent with joy in their hearts to tell the story of what Christ had done. They never tired of telling the story. God is calling each one of us to participate with him in his work of changing the world. Our love for Christ compels us to do something for humanity. You may feel like you've desperately failed God. You may have denied him by your actions more than once. The good news is that grace is still available and God is not done with you yet. There's a place in his work for you if you are willing. Every moment is too precious to spend selfishly. When we respond to God's love, by reaching out in service and sharing Christ with others, we experience life's greatest joy. So let's bow our heads for prayer as we close our Sabbath school. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for the uh, wonderful privilege we have of being your children, of serving with you as you uh, served others when you were here on this earth. So we, we would like to be willing to do more for you uh, in the coming days. And we just pray for your Holy Spirit to guide us where we should go, what we should do, and how we should present ourselves as witnesses for you in making friends for you. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, our, uh, in about 15 minutes, we'll have our uh, church service. And uh, those of you who are watching at home, come back and in 15 minutes. Don't go away. And uh, we'll uh, continue with our worship service.